Hi, I'm Kelly. As a life coach, I've noticed that the work I do with people isn't about their relationships or their jobs. It isn't about their kids or even how to find a way to get all the laundry done. All the work we do together centers around finding the answer to one simple question. What does it mean to live a fulfilled life? Join me as I explore this question and more in conversation with others in the Fulfilling Life interviews with me, Kelly Dahl, as your host. Hello, it's Kelly here on The Fulfilling Life, and I'm here talking about what it means to live a fulfilled life with Tara Gentile. And Tara, thank you so much for being here with me today to talk about this fun topic. So I'd love for you to first start off by introducing yourself and sharing with everybody about the work that you do. Sure. So as you said, my name is Tara. Um, I'm a business strategist and I work with new economy entrepreneurs and business owners on creating a bigger impact in their world, in their communities, in their families, in their own lives, um, with as little effort as possible. Uh, And uh, I'm really just jazzed about the ability to create human connections and create lasting value in the world uh, through kind of self-determined work. I think that's really the promise of uh, this new economy, this new age of commerce that we're in. And, and it's, uh, it's an exciting prospect to be able to be doing this work and helping uh, business owners of all different stripes be able to do that for themselves as well. Wonderful. I I am a big fan of your work, and that's why I'm so thrilled to talk to you. And one reason why I really wanted to talk to you for this series is because I see you as such a catalyst for helping people bring more fulfillment into their lives through the work that they do and helping Mm -hmm. people escape jobs that maybe they don't like or pursuing careers that they never thought could be careers. And um, this idea of an economy that can be fueled by passion is so exciting to me and really world changing. So it's a pleasure to have you here and talk about this idea of living a fulfilled life. Um, So I would love to hear how you answer that question, Tara, of what does it mean for you to live a fulfilled life? Well, it's a it's a big question. It's a good question. And for me, uh, living a fulfilling life is really about living life on my own personal edge. Uh, I have a lot of curiosity. I love to learn new things, do new things, try new things, uh, push my own comfort zone uh, to challenge myself. And uh, what to me is really a supremely unfulfilling life is a life of routine and predictability and, you know, just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, And I understand that for a lot of people, that's really, that's great. And that actually provides a lot of fulfillment. For me, it's, it's this uh, kind of embracing change and embracing what's new and embracing, uh, you know, the evolution of myself and the world and my family and my community uh, in a way that allows me to, ex- you know, explore the world. Uh, so to me, that, that's what living a fulfilling life is all about. Yeah, I love that. I can say that I identify with that, too. I'm, I'm, um, I love new experiences. I taught school for a long time, so I love mm-hmm. that every student brought new experiences. I was a therapist for a long time, so every client I worked with brought new experiences. And, it, and now as a coach, I just love meeting new people and their experiences and hearing about their work and hearing about their struggles and helping them through that. So just the work that I do has immersed me in that, and I like to bring mm-hmm. it into my life too. So um It's great to talk with people who believe in change as a good thing and an exciting thing. (laughs) Um, So big changes aren't always possible, even though we all have them in our lives all the time. Um, What are some of the other things that you do in your life to bring that feeling of fulfillment continuously for yourself? Oh, great question. Um, On, you know, the little things, I read a lot. I make time to read a lot. Um, I don't own a TV. I don't have cable, all these things so that I have the space in my life to do things that, to do those small activities that are really fulfilling to me and that do push me and prepare me for change and prepare me for growth. And I would say reading is probably at the top of that list. Um, I think 
I think also, you know, in terms of just little things that allow me to live a more fulfilling life, the way I spend money is, uh, and the way I prioritize spending money mm-hmm. allows me to do more fulfilling things or things that are fulfilling to me. Again, like I said, I don't have a cable bill. Well, that's like an extra $200 a month that I have for um, all sorts of different activities, eating out more often, taking a trip more often. It's, and I think it's those those little adventures uh, that, for me, fuel that personal fulfillment. Um, it's getting outside on a daily basis. It's living someplace that I love. It's, oh, it's so many little things. Um, <laughs> uh, but really trying to fulfill, fill, not fulfill my day, but fill my day. Uh, with the activities that throw me and to film uh, and to cr- kind of craft every day around uh, both being able to do those things and also leaving the flexibility and space and openness that I need to be able to kind of step back and identify those activities when they appear. I don't ever want to be so scheduled up, so calendared up that I can't make room for, you know, little magical things to happen. Like today, I took a trip down the Oregon coast instead of working, um, you know, because I wanted to go buy the new David Sedaris book at this bookshop that I adore uh, in Manzanita. And and so that was a whole, that was a whole like little, very fulfilling trip. Uh, and that's, that's the kind of way I choose to construct my life, uh, my budget, my priorities, my work schedule, so that I can have those little bits of fulfillment all the time. I love that so much. And I love, I love that it's, I love that it's an everyday thing and it's a prioritizing thing and it's understanding mm-hmm. what really does fill you up truly totally. instead of, you know, we don't, we haven't had cable for several years and we took our cable bill money and put it towards a gym. And that was what we did with that for a little bit. Or, um, you know, we like to go out to eat and a lot of families mm-hmm. will say, Oh, that's out of the budget. We can't do that. But you know, that's, I love that. Like bring me food and, <laughs> no dishes to do and I'm a happy person or little day trips here and there. So knowing to ask those questions of what is truly fulfilling instead of, well, yeah, watching a show on cable might be fun once in a while, but it's not worth $200 a month. So this is instead and just prioritizing things in a way that are going to, so that you live your life filling yourself up all the time. Um, Yes. It's wonderful. And it's so possible. It's not as complicated so <laughs> as, as some people think. Um, no, yeah. I think it's a matter of stepping outside of what is conventional, what everybody else is doing, and realizing that what everybody else does, what is conventional, is may not be best for you. There may be some aspects of that that you really value, that really fulfill you. And then there are other aspects that you can choose to say, you know what? That's not really on my list. And we're going to try something else instead. And we totally have this ability to shuffle our own personal priorities around um, depending on on what they are and what we choose to do. And I I just think we tend to get really stuck in a list of shoulds when there's a whole world of coulds out there, you know. Um, And I think identifying those for yourself can really lead to, uh, in very small ways or in very small actions, a big, big bump up in fulfillment on a daily basis. Most definitely. I love that. Turning, letting go of the shoulds and opening up your life to all these coulds and all of these possibilities that are there, right there for your taking. Um, So I'm curious too, Tara, there are definitely obstacles along the path too. So um, what are some of the things that get in your way of living your life in a fulfilling way? Oh, man, all sorts of things. Um, I have to say, on a regular basis, there's not, I've kind of crafted my life in a way, and I've made some very difficult choices um, that allow me to have a very fulfilling life on a daily basis uh, with very few challenges. But uh, certainly in my past, there have been all sorts of things that have been quite challenging. Uh, One was my location. Where I was living uh, had always been 
really not up to me. <laughs> I never kind of made a conscious choice about where I was going to live um, and the kind of community that I wanted to be in, the kind of space, environmental space that I wanted to be in. And last year I made a big decision to make a big change and move out to the Oregon coast. And that's been an amazing change in my life. Um, I certainly had fulfillment before that. I have a lot more now. Um, I've also given up some things that, or, you know, kind of, there's been some, some trade-offs that have been not awesome, but, uh, on a daily basis, it, it's, it works really well. So Tara, when the, when the obstacles do come around, what are some of the things that you do that help you get through those bumps in the road and keep you moving towards this life of fulfillment that you want? Yeah. So I'll tell you, this reminds me a lot of the topic that Tanya Geisler and I just did a workshop on in Seattle. We talked about leaning into the corners of life, you know, how like life throws you twists and turns. And instead of, you know, really hitting the brakes, um, like we're prone to do or, you know, slowing down or, oh, heaven forbid, getting in an accident. How do you learn to navigate those corners at high speed or if not high speed? A relatively fast pace. Uh, and I think, so this, this question of um, how do you deal with those challenges, those obstacles to living a fulfilling life really reminds me of that. And I think the main, the main takeaway that we gave to people in this workshop was that, um, you know, you can always consider the choices. We often feel like when we're on a path and life is throwing us a corner or when we get backed into or we feel backed into a physical corner, uh, it can feel like there's no choice. It can feel like whatever is in front of us, well, that's just the way it has to be. Whatever the next step is, that's just what has to be. And that's never true. There's either the choice to do something different, to buck convention, to uh, challenge yourself, to try something new, or there's just the choice to see things a different way, to recast the situation, the corner, the change in a way that gives you the possibilities you need to go the direction you want to go or to make that direction the way you want to go. Um, and for me, that's that's always I think that's why I like change so much, because I enjoy figuring out, well, what is what can I learn from this? What can I take away from this? How can I make this a positive thing? How can I get excited about this? Uh, you know, what can, what other great things can this particular corner, this particular challenge catalyze for me? Um, and I think if you can see the obstacles that way, if you can approach it from a position of choice, um, or just from a position of imagination, <laughs> you, have a much, you have a much better likelihood of being able to create a very fulfilling situation out of it. Yeah. And, it, you know, it, it's putting yourself in the driver's seat of your own mm. life instead of riding around to whatever those corners might be um, based on somebody else's power over you, which is, you know, you don't you don't want that. You want you want no. to be in charge of what's going on in your life. Ex um, exactly. And that reminds me of a, of a not a funny story because no story I tell is funny, <laughs> but that I told at this workshop. And that is simply that. I get horrible motion sickness, right? And so if I'm not in the driver's seat I need, uh, and I'm on a windy road, I need to have taken some drugs, you know, get the Dramamine going through the system. Um, or, you know, something horrible that people do to me is I'll be in the back seat, I'll be in the even the front passenger seat, and we'll be on a windy road or we'll be doing something crazy in a parking lot for God only knows reasons. <laughs> and um, they'll say, Wee! And I say to whoever's driving, look, if you're saying we while you're driving, I'm saying, oh, <laughs> but I can take those same roads. I can do those same crazy things in a parking lot, which I don't actually do. <laughs> but um, And if I'm in the driver's seat, it doesn't bother me. I know where my center yeah. of gravity is. I feel grounded. I feel in control. And I think life isn't all about feeling in control or even being in control, but it is about having that point of focus, that point of grounding, uh, knowing where your center of gravity is and being able to return to it that keeps you from feeling like you want to puke. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's 
So that's my metaphor for today. I love it. I love it. And even, you know, I, I, cause I do this a lot, like to take it a step further, like you can't always be in the driver's seat, right? There are no. things that are going to happen in your life that suck or that might mm-hmm. even be, turn out to be super fun. But at that point you can take the drama mean, and that's how you can, yeah. that's how you can get your control back. You know, like the there's, turn the air off. right. There's, there's always something that you can do because you're always in choice and you can, yes. You can change your perspective. You can change your position. You can get out of the car if you want to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I love it. Tara, Tara, it has been all the pleasure that I knew that it would and then some to talk to you. So I thank you very much for being here and talking with everybody about what it means to live a fulfilled life for you. Um, your your words of wisdom will carry people far, I know. Would you like to tell everybody one last time where they can find you online so they can learn more about your work? Sure. Well, first, thank you, Kelly. And second, uh, yeah, you can find me at TaraGentilly.com. I post um, weekly or biweekly articles on doing business in the new economy there. Uh, so you can sign up and subscribe and I would love to have, to have you as part of my U economy uh, community. And then also the other best place to find me is on Twitter. You can find me at Tara Gentilly. I love to answer questions there. Please say hi. Tell me what you're doing. Tell me how you're doing. And uh, let's connect. Awesome. Thanks so much, Tara. Thank you. Mm-hmm.